And I'm going to come back to the object and I'm just going to choose text. I'm going to type in some words. Great. I have just typed some black words on a black background. Would be really nice if I can see them differently. Maybe a good time to come down here, go to the list of different kind of stars and just drag one and drop it on it. Now you can actually see the words. So you can see I've typed in this is a viz title tutorial. I've spelt it wrong. But at the moment, you know, I can't get at those letters, but looks like anything else, double click on it. You can actually get at the words, change them. Then click on this arrow and you can grab them up and move them around. Now you notice as I'm moving, I'm getting a bunch of guides coming up. So for example, that there is helping me to line up the center of the title with the center of the screen. If I move upwards, still centered horizontally, if I get it right, it's just not centered vertically. You can grab hold of the edges and drag and make it bigger and smaller, just like you can in most titling programs. Hold down or shift, it constrains the proportions. Right click on it, you get all sorts of options. Like, for example, aligning the objects. Yeah, so vertical center, shoves it in the middle vertically, but not horizontally. Bunging it right in the center of the screen, and so on. Nice keyboard shortcuts there, which some of them you can remember, like applying it to the vertical center of the screen is V. So you know, shove it around somewhere. Oh, I wish that was in the center of the screen vertically. V, it's in the center of the screen vertically. H, horizontally. C, sticks it into the center. Now this only works when you've got the arrow going. If you happen to have double clicked on it, so you've got the T going, and you type in C, it's gonna put C. Obviously you have to go back to the arrow, then move it, then type it. So let's put it down towards the bottom and let's center it horizontally. You can click on it and change the typeface to anything that you feel like. This is all my list of possible typefaces I've got on the computer. What you really wanna do is choose two or three and just stick on those. But anyway, I like the fact that once you actually choose a typeface, the ones you've chosen recently, up here at the top of the list. So if I wanted to choose it for another title, I can go back to the font that I used in the last one very quickly. So I've got my title laid out. I'd now like to change the look of it. So the first thing is the basic properties of the title, like where it is, left, right, up and down. I've been picking it up and moving around in here using these handles, but you can choose exactly the same thing just by moving these. So I stick a bit of rotation on it, just by sticking my cursor in there and moving the mouse backwards and forwards. I can actually just come over here and click on that little round dot in the middle. So I can rotate it there or I can use the numbers, but that's what all these are for. Your next tab is color. Here you can see there's lots of different things here for color. There's all these little V's, which is the same as the V's over here. And there's lots of different stuff that I can put in. So what's all this about? This title's got a bit of a color because I dragged this template on it. This template is a white piece of text with a black outline. And you can see over here, I've got a face and an outline. So the face is the color, the outline is the outside. Like if I want the outline to be a different color, click on color, come down to here, choose the color. I've got a hideous yellow outline. Now normally, if you've just typed your text from scratch, then if they don't have an outline, they just have a face. So they start off like this, just one solid color. Generally the color you did the last one on. Then you choose to add in outlines and shadows and things like that. So come over to here and I want to add in an outline. I can just click on this plus button and then I can choose to add in an outline. I can choose to add in a shadow or some depth. And then I can click on each of these in turn and fiddle with it and change the color to whatever I feel like. I can also adjust things about them. So, so far I've chosen the color. I've got the width, for example, of the depth got the angle of the depth, whether it's inner, outer, and so on. You go to the shadow, you've got the same kind of thing as the shadow, so I can blur up the shadow a bit, change the angle of the shadow, change the width of the shadow. If I decided I don't like the depth on top of the shadow, I can just select the depth plus minus, and it gets rid of that. And you know, you can get carried away, you can put 15 different outlines on it and make them look really, really hideous. So essentially that's all I'm doing here, it's just adding in different sections. Down here, where I'm looking at the face, you can see I've got color, which you can either do a basic, simple color, choose from any of these, or choose from the color picker over here, or click on this and choose some color from somewhere else on the interface. Actually, I'm gonna to stick to white. Or I can stick a gradient on it. So I'm now going from blue to white. You notice that's going per letter. There's linear gradients, circle, clocks, and all that sort of thing. Lots of different types of gradients. 
far as the gradient colors go, click on that one and I can choose different colors there. Click on this one and I can choose the color at that end. I can also click in the middle and put some more colors in. So I can give them some really atrocious gradients. That may have been groovy in the 60s, I'm not entirely sure. You've got quadro gradient, so four different colors. And then you've got bump gradient, which is basically instead of using these gradient colors, it's using a picture. Now I haven't got a picture at the moment, but I just click on this little box and then I can choose from any of the pictures they've got. And you can see there the gradient is now being made up of those colors, but as per the picture. Mm hmm. I'm going to go straight to a normal color. Apart from changing the colors down here, you've got numbers which you can drag across and they'll change the colors as well. And then you've got things like textures. So instead of just having a simple color, I could use a texture instead. Now again, nothing popping up here, but if I tick on that, you'll notice I've got another of these little checkered boxes. Tick on that and I can choose from any kind of texture that I've got. So there we are, I've got that kind of blue texture on it. I can stick a sheen on it. So again, tick the sheen, turn it on, and then you can see I've got that white line in the middle. Now a linear sheen is just a white blob, a bitmap sheen is again is using some kind of picture to put a sheen on it. Then you can choose to do things like put a bevel on it. So I'm now beveling up the face of it and just changing the depth and so on. I can change the look of it by using this sort of concave border as well. All this is so far adjusting the first thing, the face. Now I could just click on the outline and get straight to changing the outline, but you'll notice is that as I'm moving up and down with the slider, I go from face to outline to shadow. So I can come down here and I'm on the shadow and I can change the shadow. So pretty simple to make the text look how you like. I, I can't stand that green, I've got to turn it off, sorry. So so far all I've done is created a bit of text and generated a look for it. The other tabs you've got up here, this one, it's all to do with the position of the text. So you can see the, the translate is what they call left, right, up and down and backwards and forwards and the rotation and so on. Now you say, oh, hang on, I've got one there and I've got one there. What's the difference? The very first one is sort of the resting or the, the, the position of a piece of static text, but you can't animate it. This is how you would animate it. So we'll come on to that in a second. The text box actually brings up a box where you can type the text in. So instead of selecting it, I can come over here and I can change things about it. Put some capitals in and it'll change up there. Very useful when you're doing rolling and crawling text. And you notice on there I get all sorts of other things. I can bring in text from another program. I can save it out. I can do all sorts of things with it. And the final one is scrolling. Now I'm not doing scrolling text at the moment, but if I was doing a scrolling list, this is where I change all the parameters of the scrolling. So that's very simply gone through all these different boxes. I tend to use this one and this one the most. This one for the look of whatever it is I'm doing. So it might be the look of the text, or it might be a look of a sparkly effect or something like that. And I use this one for animating it and moving it around. And I did bypass the bottom half of this, where you can see I've got a few templates for different types of effects. Now some of these are the same templates I've got down here, just a different way of applying it. So, so far I've just put in a piece of text and I've got it ready to do a bit of animation.